play. <laughs> okay. To do the to do the free play with the the zero eight build. So so I was watching you play, trying to see if I'd recognize anything that we may have missed between your O seven version from the nineteenth to the one we just cooked as release candidate that's being released tomorrow. So I kept watching and I kept listening to you and I thought, huh. So I went back and looked at my records to find out why I banned you and I realized, yeah, maybe I, I, you know, maybe I was a bit too hasty on that one, but he was, he was trolling me in the forums and on the screen page, you know, the, the game's screenshots page. I mean, is that a bannable offense? I don't know, but I mean, I got annoyed because, that's you know, fine. If, if you, if you're at work and somebody shows up at your office and starts slagging you off and doing all kinds of crazy things, you might want to throw them out the window, you know, so... Sometimes after working, you know, 16, 17 hour days, the last thing you want to see is some person shitting on your work, right? So it is what it is. But, you know, I, I've got, you know, I'm a, I'm a gamer. You know, I have very strong opinions, not unlike any other gamer out there. I have no hard feelings. I just don't have, I just do not tolerate trolling and harassment. But um, I think after watching your stream, I, I, I have a bit more understanding of um you know <laughs> the sort of you know where you were coming from in trolling me and all this mm -hmm. stuff so i recognize it as just maybe just harmless but you know these days if it looks like a target it's a target go find a gun so you know but it is what it is i i have no hard feelings that's why i decided to talk to you not a big deal that's cool i, I respect you for that i mean it's important to see both sides and I'm fine with giving you shit. I'm fine with giving everybody else shit. That's the kind of person I am. I like talking shit. Um, <laughs> one thing I'm curious about, and yep. you've mentioned it before, ground vehicles. I It took you f over three years of a minute to go from reviewing aircraft to actually getting them released for the public. Right. How come we've seen nothing on ground vehicles, yet you're saying they're due to be released you know, in a few months? That's easy. Hang on. One second. Okay. One moment. Let me just grab this, and I'm going to stick this in your stream. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. Okay. If you go, to, anybody who goes to that link, okay. and you go back, you go back all the way to 2012, um, you will see that we've had aircraft, vehicles, and everything in the game. First person infantry since day one. Because the way we built this game, um, I built it in sections where we had we did we, we wanted a game that would be first person, not a game where the aircraft was the avatar you were playing or the vehicle was the avatar you were playing. Okay. So we started first with the infantry, then the vehicles, then the aircraft. We've had all that working since 2012. But what took it but so it, long to be released publicly? Okay. Well, it's a massive game. You, you've been in the game. You, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of this. It's, it's a really huge game. It's got a lot of moving parts. And the biggest problem was after going from the first engine that we built in-house, and then we switched to the new engine in 2011, we had to port over a lot of things, not just assets, but technologies, you know, uh, flight dynamics, ground dynamics, uh, the first-person infantry stuff, which is still not quite there yet, as you okay. know. Yeah. So... So um, at that point, we started. We were already building the, um, the, the you know, because you know, you, you start. You can actually, when you're building a game that's multiplayer, you can start with a multiplayer. You can start with single player, and then you tack on multiplayer, and then you've got now this hybrid of a single player multiplayer. You 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 forge your way through. What we did was because we couldn't test most of the game in a multiplayer environment because we didn't have the multiplayer. We had to build it to a certain point in single player. Once we got that working in single player, we now had to integrate the multiplayer kernel to the game. So even though we had all the hooks in there, we just, we did not have a quote unquote massive multiplayer network engine in the back end because we weren't ready for it. It was just one more thing. We had, you know, we have, us programmers do things we call stubs. We stub the code out. We put in markers where things would go. Well, multiplayer would go here. This would go here. If this is going to be done this way, because there's certain things you can't do in multiplayer that you can do in single player and vice yeah. versa. So in 2014, 
I decided that once we got the multiplayer to a certain point where it needed to be tested, and we were now part of the Steam ecosystem, because I, I decided to use Steam because there's a lot of back-end stuff we didn't want to build. I mean, we're small guys, right? We're not, we don't have you know 300 people where we have like 100 people doing networking and a few million dollars doing just that. So I no, had to make a decision on what I wanted to do. I could, have, I could have gone with uh, things like Flip, uh, Playfab or other back-end technologies, which would have taken too long to do. But with Steam, Steamworks gives you all this stuff. You know, so I thought, okay, well, we've got all these things we don't want to build. Why not just use Steamworks? So in 2014, after we got the multiplayer integrated, we integrated Steam, and we wanted, we had to test it because there's no way. This is the thing. There's no way to live test your multiplayer um, outside of a network environment unless you put it out on the internet. And the only way we could get that on Steam was to integrate it into the Steam works, you know, into Steam itself. Yeah. And the only way to test that, when we talked to our Valve counterparts, they said, well, you know, you have a choice. You can still have it on there and give out keys, or you can put it on early access, which does the same thing. So I didn't want to have to deal with the hassles of having the game on there, you know, not being, you know, you can't buy it. Then I'd have to start issuing keys for people to come in and play it and check, you know, like better keys. I didn't want to do that. So Valve said, well, just release it in early access and, you know, stick a price tag on it. Everybody will have access to it and you don't have to worry about issuing keys. So we did that in September 2014. And we did the first round of tests. The server is back up, by the way, if you want to go on. If yeah, you want to go on, I'm you have now. an account, right? Yeah. Um, so, so we did that. And then after release in 2014, in March, we got to a point where there's a lot of, you know, the authentication, entitlement, uh, rewards and things like that. We had to test it. There's no way to test it. So we said, okay, we'll do a free play weekend to stress this, that, to see if there are any blockers, any crashes, any problems. And well, you know what happened with that. We turned it on, Valve turned it on before we had the servers online. So a lot of people couldn't connect. And by the time we turned the servers offline and people were already in there, not getting anywhere beyond the account's creation screen, they got pissed, wrote bad reviews, I got upset, I took the whole thing down and I just pretty much, you know, um, it was like a child, I took my ball and went home. And I saw I'd never do it again. Okay, um, I'm in line of defense for a minute. Do you, are you free to give me a quick tour of the game? Because people are asking for yeah. that. Okay. Yes, I am. Unfortunately, I have to go. What I was going to suggest is, tomorrow the, two eight, the 08 version is going public. Why don't we, why don't you and I okay. plan to, to go in the game tomorrow or over the weekend together? Okay, that's fine. What, when do you have to uh, go today? I, I can, I'm around for another 15, 20 minutes because, you know, I have, I have to go and get some things done. I wasn't planning okay. on, you know, doing this, but, but, you know, I'm, I can, I can hang around for another 10, 15 minutes if you want. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'm fine with talking to you another, how long you can. Um, so tomorrow you'll be fine with taking me through a, uh, walk through this game and yep. show other people about it. Okay. Yep. Um, and, I'll, and I'll even give you some keys to give away. That's fine with me. It's free shit. Can't argue with free shit. Yeah, we're doing a lot of things. I mean, yeah, the game is huge. I mean, a lot of people don't, well, some people don't really understand that when you build in a game like this, it's got a lot of moving parts. A lot of things are going to break. I mean, the game is not perfect. It's not even, it's not where. It's not even 80% where it needs to be. For instance, right now you're playing this version you're playing. We've actually gone back. Did you see the Star God walkthrough I did over the weekend? I've seen bits and pieces. It honestly wasn't yeah. the most entertaining video, but yes, yeah. it, yes, it wasn't because I wanted to. I was in a tour. Actually, I was actually going through the level, and somebody said, "You know, you should make a video of that." Then I made a video of it, and I thought, you know, hey, I'll just post it. But actually, I was, I was, I was checking out the the latest lighting and a lot of people said it's too bright blah 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 we've actually toned that down so it'll be a whole lot different in tomorrow's version because these are things we do over and over again to get it right i mean some people complain it's too blue the colors there's no hue but you know what this is it's it's the, the game has its own art style it's not going to appeal to a lot of people but it, w it was never designed to appeal to everybody okay. and you know, so that's pretty much how it is. And I mean, it's it's gonna get there. Now we've got aircraft. 
Um, I'm pretty happy with the aircraft the way they are now. We've got a whole bunch of tweaks we have to do. For instance, as you know, we've just revamped all the first-person character models. The female ones are done. They're going in maybe next week. And we're going to do all the weapons again, like this weapon you're holding. This weapon was done in like 2010, the one you're holding right now. Yeah. Um, if you've seen the FG-45, which we did as one of the first ones we, we redid, that one looks so much better. So all the weapons have been redone. We've done all the characters. Some of the aircraft have been redone. Um, we're doing all the level tweaks, the lighting, all these things. We're doing special effects. Okay. Um, and um, other things other things we're looking to improve graphically are things like animations. Like, for instance, the, the first-person movement doesn't feel right. It feels like you're gliding on air. Yes, it does. Um, and that's something else that uh, we, we're looking at. Actually, it's going to be one of the major fixes we do in tweaks we do in the next in the upcoming build uh, in March then the plan going forward right now is with the aircraft in and the ongoing tweaks fixes crashes you know graphical updates the next thing we're going to do we're going to activate all the weapon systems on the star guard and on the stations what's what what that does is you know how you go to the detention hold and you use the, the terminal to turn it on and you know people you know to get people out of uh, detention and on the star guard same thing. You use the terminal. It's the same terminal you, similar terminal you use to get, you know, supply station used to get aircraft. What we're going to do is, uh, one side can get in there, activate the terminal, and all the turrets, all the turrets on the Star Guard, all the turrets on all the stations will engage hostiles. So if you're a Galka Marine and you turn on the, you activate them, it'll they will always they will engage all the insurgents until somebody goes back in the station or the Star Guard and switches it off or re repurposes it so it attacks the other side. So that's our next plan for March. That's our biggest update for March. That gives people the opportunity to test the station defenses because the way the, the gameplay works is the stations, the carrier, they all have their weapon systems and you can individually take out all the turrets and you can take out the, the station shields. I mean, you can't destroy them and you get, you get experience points and, and, and things like that for doing all that stuff. And then after that, we're going to activate the androids. After that, we activate the vehicles. And then those are all the main components of the game. Then we go back in and start doing tweaks and crashes and all the things people like you bitch about that are you know, valid constructive criticism and address what we can. Okay, um, back to my second question. Which you never really answered. How far through the development process are ground vehicles? You went on a tangent and started talking about the whole development process for your game. You didn't really talk about the actual vehicles. The vehicles are working. I mean, it's just, I would say, maybe one or two, one or two versions away. I just opted not to do them now because I'll give you the logic for that. Um, picture this if we do vehicles now before we do the defense systems, or we, before we do the androids, well, now you have vehicles. But vehicles don't offer any tangible gameplay. Do you know what I mean? I mean, mm. you can ha you have the vehicles. Just because they're there doesn't mean they serve any purpose right now without tangible gameplay. But that's the reason. That's the reason why I haven't activated them. But I would I would anticipate by April they'll be in. Surely they'd be just as important as aircraft. Be I mean, even though aircraft allow for the space combat. Vehicles allow for the ground, faster ground movement and ground combat, which this game is lacking a lot of combat due to its low player count. I think it's it's okay to be frank about that. That's true, but how do you envision, how do you figure that it, the introduction of ground vehicles at this point in time would, would make that any better? I, I mean, I'm willing to hear... I mean, you're a gamer. Tell me why you think ground vehicles are that important at this stage. I mean, then well, we can go from there. I, I think a lot of things are more important than doing any kind of features of them. And I think focusing on actually getting this game to a playable state, because my game has just crashed from just flying forwards, I think that's a much more important thing to do. And um, I think also an important thing to notice is that this is a massively multiplayer online game the problem right. is with this game there's not a lot of people playing it if there's no there's no point having world of warcraft and having a 40-man raid if there's only four people playing that game 
Correct. And there's a there's a lot of gameplay decisions I find very questionable, such as the spawn points on the Star Guard. Why are right. Galcom and Insurgent so close spawning to each other? Well, you can if you have any if you have any Okay, the reason the reason we spawn them close to each other in the Star Guard is because to quite honest, we just picked a spot and said, Yeah, this is fine. There's really there was really no logic to it. We just didn't want this one in the same place. I mean, they're all in the Star Guard. I mean, we can move those spawn points anywhere we want. The, the reason those spawn points are where they are right now is because they give people, with new players, an easy access to the DJP, the HEIS, you know, to get off the station. We could put them anywhere on the station, but it'll, on, 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 on the carrier, but it'll take too long for them to get from where they are to where they need to be if they're not familiar with the game. In the final game, the idea is to have multiple spawn points around the station and the Star Guard so that it's not just the same ones all the time. Do you know what I mean? Just like on the planet. Okay. Um, talking about the final game, I mentioned before... Can I, this... can, 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 I just noticed something. Are you, you're playing the game right now, right? Yeah. When you get back to the main menu, do you have a starter kit? Are you using a starter kit account? Is that right? Yeah, I have the oh, okay, Tac okay. 1 starter one, kit. I'll, yeah. Well, no, I just noticed that four of the ground scenes were disabled. If you have a Tac account, they shouldn't be disabled. Well, unless, the server's, unless the server is down. Uh, that's another problem. How come the servers need restarting so much when this game is completely dependent on servers? Surely any kind of server needing to be restarted to fix a problem is a catastrophic issue. Well, simple. Because the game is, is the, the game is tied closer to the server, so every time we change something, we have to take it down. Every time the server crash, every time the server crashes, before it restarts, it has to tell us why. And during that time, sometimes it does not recover, you know. But we do get the crash dumps, and that's how we fix them. So. Once the, and unfortunately, when you're building a game that's in, in development, you have all these crash bugs, they have a wealth of information. That's how you know what's wrong and how to fix it. So unfortunately, the downside is the more the server crashes and sends you information, the, the, the more likely it is it's never going to come back up unless you take it down completely and patch it and bring it back up. It's a process. It's not fun, but, you know, that's the joy of game development. Okay, okay, fair enough. That thing is. It is important to know your point instead of what you do do. Is you just tend to call people a troll for pointing out your game, and I think that's kind of irresponsible of you as a game developer. That's not offensive. That's just a observation. I didn't get that. I'm okay. sorry, I didn't get that part. Re could you repeat that? How come if we bring up any issues on the Steam discussion board, you consider it trolling instead of us bringing up an important issue like with um. When I posted a screenshot the other day of right. me being unable to spawn anywhere on a server, you considered it trolling instead of actually taking that matter seriously. Well, I think you, you can answer your question by taking a look at the change log and the known issues. I mean, most of that stuff didn't come from us. I mean, there's criticism and there's constructive criticism. You know, a lot of people report a lot of things and we use that feedback to shape how the game is developed. Sometimes people don't, un don't cannot express themselves without being impolite without attacking other people but neither can being mean, mean in, or rude. in terms of what you do with star citizen don't you right. feel like you personally attack the developers of star citizen and also the backers of star citizen no i do not and i'm not going to talk about star citizen is there any reason to that yes because it's a whole it's a completely different issue which has no relevance to um, what we're discussing right now and anybody who knows how the whole Star Citizen thing started knows that it started with one blog in July 2015 and mm -hmm. I got attacked for it and people who get attacked should expect to get attacked back okay um, is there an, will there be a point in time where we can talk about this or is yes, this like an, okay well, can we talk about it tomorrow that's fine with you I think I'd rather, let's put it this way, I don't, I mean, I get accused all the time about, you know, the whole Star Citizen slash Minor Defense thing, so I would much rather 
it happens at some of the time where it's not in such close proximity as I was talking about, you know, line of defense and whatnot. Maybe in a week, two weeks, maybe. That's fine. Ask me again, and I'll, I'll be more than happy to talk to you about it. Okay, that's that's fine with me. I I understand that. I can understand how it can give the wrong message if we talk about it so soon after talking about your own game. By the way, just so you know, you might not be aware, a lot of people are using this camera improperly. This is an orbit camera. <laughs> You're not supposed to play the game from this from this camera. Then why and is this camera um, used by default? Like I spawned this camera, I can't. I have no idea how to change it. That's correct. Well, here, you, oh, you can change it by pressing F1. Oh, okay. Um, Wait. Kind of uh, yeah, F F1 should change it because F1 gives you only you have three. If you have the, the Aurora aircraft, you would have you would have three. You would have three um, cameras, the nope. 3D HUD, the regular one, and this one. Oh. This was supposed to be an orbit camera, which is only displayed when you're first launching. So it's like a cinematic camera. All of a sudden, people started playing with it, so we've just disabled it in the, in the upcoming, upcoming update. And there you go. That's the, yeah, that's the first one without the aircraft. That's the actual first virtual cockpit. This one is just like an orbital camera, so we've now disabled it so it, so people don't get used to using it because it has completely different mechanics. It does. So uh, this is... Look, so the one that appears like it's on the front of the ship is the one I should be using by default. The one that, the one that right now where you see the ship on the back, you know, the, the rear of the ship, of the, of the ship itself, that's not the camera to play the game with. It was never designed to do that. Okay. It was designed as an orbit camera where you can take a look at yourself, take screenshots, you know, look around the world and see where you're going if you're trying to do some, you know, I don't know, going through some tunnel or something. But the camera, the game actually has two cockpits. The Aurora with the 3D, which is the only aircraft that has one right now because we're building the others. And you have the virtual clean screen cockpit, which is the one I'm looking at right now that you've got. Yeah. So that external orbit camera it's still enabled but now you, it's it works properly now where you have to use the um, control key and the mouse then it'll take you there it's just like a you know an, it's like a mouse look as it were that's what it was okay. designed to do that's why most games a lot of games that have first person don't have third person play because a game designed for third person play you have to design the camera around that game mechanic because it just doesn't work by just saying, okay, we can put a camera in third person, all of a sudden we now have a game you can play from third person. It doesn't work that way. The game has to be designed for it. And that's why some games with third person, people go and hack it to have a first person view and and you know, and vice versa. And you still have those hiccups. Okay. Um, Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, why, is the con why are the controls by default requiring free hands to have an effective dogfight? Because... You have to use the WAS keys for the movement, the arrow keys for the rotation, and then you have to use the mouse for shooting. Why? Why is that a thing? No, you don't. You don't need to use for anything. The arrow keys are just duplicates of WSAD. No, no, because W goes forward, but forward on the arrow key pitches down. Oh, I see what you talk. Well, because you can use the well. If you have controls, for instance, you, if you have a joystick. The game was designed around using a joystick. You can still use the mouse. Now, the W key, which does the, the, the forward and the D does back, that's something I've been meaning to change, and I probably will change it because that's a valid, that's, that's a valid point. Um, it wasn't, I, one of the things you need to understand is if you were using the WSAD to go forward, backward, left, and right, and you have the mouse that controls your pitch, you know, roll, you know, rolling yaw, you can do that. But it's one of those things where we inherited the, the keys from the vehicles, you know, because in the vehicles there's no pitching up and down. And we adapted that to be consistent on the aircraft side. And we are going to change that. But that is a very, that's a very good point. To be honest with you, just never got around to doing it. Okay, so can you control the aircraft? Like, can you control the rotation of the aircraft by using the mouse? It's You can, but it's disabled. And the reason, we <laughs> we, the reason it's disabled is because, again, Mouse flight control is something you have to do right. We've got joystick, we've got keyboard, and we've got, of course, we've got the, you know, the Xbox 360 controller. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you plug a controller, you have an Xbox 360, I believe. Do I, you have one? I have an Xbox One controller, and I have Xbox 360 yeah. somewhere if, in my room. Well, uh, 
either one will work. If you stick any of those controllers in the game, you can actually fly the entire game using those controllers. It's all completely seamless. Because, you know, the thing is, when, you, when you're when talking about a game like this, you're either going to use one controller. You're either stuck with keyboard and mouse, or a joystick, or, you know, one of the, you know, the console controllers. If you play the game with a console controller or with a joystick, it's a whole different experience. Uh, but you made a you made a very you made a valid point about the you know the WSAD keys, and I really do need to step up. You know my decision on whether or not we're going to change that. Okay. Um, back to a point I've mentioned a few times on Steam, which you very, I'd taken from my perspective aggressively, uh, kind of refused to answer. It's kind of why. I I know you say how it's your it's your deficient definition of seamless but seamless right. is not the right word to use when describing your game because there is no seamlessness to it it's not like uh, Tom Clancy's The Division where you can seamlessly go from a PvE zone to this PvP zone, it's not that your game is not seamless by definition, so why do you still think it is? Well, be well again I think I wrote an entire missive on Steam on the Steam forum about that. Here's the thing. When you're talking about a seamless environment, you're talking about one of two things. So, uh, let me see if I can. Okay, let's use this an as an example. The um, Infinity Battlescape game. You're familiar with that, right? No. Nope. You're not? I don't know. I've heard of it. I have no interest yeah, in playing okay. it. Well, Infinity. Well, okay, let's talk about Elite Dangerous then, because Elite Dangerous now, with their with their planet access, mm -hmm. you can go from space to planet. It's seamless because, you know, it's... It hides the loading, no loading screen. Right. It hides the loading well, they... screen in the uh, transition in Super Cruise. That's correct, just like Star Citizen does. Star Citizen does not use it. It uses 64-bit positioning in a world map. Uh, and it... it, it, sorry, it, it... we're not going to have that conversation again. But you brought up Star they... Citizen. No, I'm going... Well, okay. What I'm saying is, I don't want to have that 64-bit discussion because but people you are it missing. Up. People are missing. Yeah, the people are missing the whole point about how that works. But enough about that. Let's use Elite Dangerous. When you look at that, when you look at how they do it, again, like you said, they hide it behind a whatever loading screen, whatever, yeah. blah blah blah. Now, traditionally, when you build a game, if you Let's take, uh, uh, I don't know, GTA is not a good example. Pick a game that has different levels when the round ends, you know, another one loads, or if you go from A from one sector to the other, you have to wait for them to stream that sector in. Well, GTA does that. So yeah. that also qualifies as a seamless transition. All right? Yes. So that's, but that's, that's be because, but because, because you're not, you're not exiting, the, you're not, you're not exiting the game. You're not stopping the game. You're not changing the dynamics of the game. You are still in the game. You go from A to B. H how you get from A to B is largely irrelevant because you are still within the game because all these moving parts are part of the game world. The way LOD was designed, you can picture yourself draw a huge box, put a you know draw other small boxes in that small box. That's your entire world. The only problem is, it's a lot of memory to fit all that crap in. Most games won't run it. I mean, yeah, they would, but you'd have to stream, you'd have to go to hard drive for memory and all that crap, okay? So, instead, you load as much as you can, and when you go from one, from A to B, you stream that part in, yeah. And in our case, in, in our case, rather than giving you, um, you know, a TikTok box, we'll give you a nice fancy, you know, screen. We can actually remove the screen. You will just be seeing the circular um, we'll icon be... on the little right-hand corner rotating. And we'll be it's doing the same thing. It's okay. doing the same thing. But back to where we're talking about transitioning from one scene to another. GTA does that by kind of masking the loading screen because it pans out of the world with the kind of the clouds. And then goes yep. to another, and that's all hiding a loading screen. That's just a clever way of doing it. However, your game has loading screens. That's the, lo having a loading screen is is makes 
it not seamless. If if your game if your game had a bit where ah, it would hang, like. Hang on one second. Do you, do you, hang on, sorry, sorry, I, I I don't mean to interrupt. Do you see that circular icon in the lower, the lower right hand corner that yeah. you were just seeing? Okay. Yeah, that's now, no, that's normally an icon used in games to signify that the game hasn't crashed while it's loading. Actually, no. It's in our game. It tells you that it's actually loading. Please wait. It may... that, that's that's that, that's yeah. what I just said. It, it signifies that the game hasn't crashed because it's loading because it's still moving. Right. Now, when you went from the station and right now you're on heatwave. Yes. That that loading screen you saw didn't have to be there. Have you seen what happens when you go? Here's a perfect example. Have you ever used the HEIS Mark II suit? Nope. Because I. Honestly, I, I'm not a fan of how you've laid out the controls. It just, the, the scrolling feels very clunky to me. Okay, the reason I, the reason I brought that up is the, H, the using the HIS Mark II suit from the Star Guard or the, Arch, or the Archangel to enter yeah. Heatwave or the planet below is a perfect example of how that works. You can, when, you, when you grab the HIS suit from the Star Guard okay, I'll do that and, now. And, you get the, and you get the map, okay? That map is like a loading screen. It says, this is where you are, this is where you're going. If that scene did not exist, you would not have a live map of it. So everything is already loaded. Well, no, the there's, there's, thing... a, there's a difference between loading a map in low resolution to actually being in that map. Well, hang on. No, that is not true. Because, again, if the scene didn't exist, you would not have a reference point to use it. Pretty much the same thing right now in, in Star Guard. If you're using a T-shaft to go from deck one to deck two, the T-shaft would not have any point of reference in deck two unless deck two exists and is already loaded. Do you understand? Because Star Guard has three decks. And when you use the T-shaft to go from deck one to deck two, there's no loading screen because we've loaded the entire Star Guard into memory. Oh, okay, but already, this, it's this, already there. the Star Guard is only really made up of three models, though, because in Actually, the model... Hang on, the, 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 the suit's on the left. You, you need to grab yeah. the suit from the wall. Go okay. back, go back, go back. I, I'm, I'm already go back, here. Go, go back to the airlock. There, there's a delay when I'm streaming. Ah, okay. right. Uh, I, I'm currently in a place where I can select my destination, so I'm going to click down, and then I'm going to click accept. Yeah, okay. just, look, just look for the airlock, and the HIS Mark II suit is hanging on the wall. On the left, you see it up there. There's one on the left, one on the right. Uh, all, Just I, point to... all I get is the exact same loading screen I can I get when I'm using a DJP, and you can see my stream when it loads for proof of that. But I just end up spawning somewhere in the world. I can't tell okay, where. Okay, now you see, now this is what I was trying to explain to you. That map you're looking at, no, that that is a live satellite map of the planet below. It's the okay. same thing in all in in all my games. What's happened now is. The scene is actually being streamed. Yeah, because doing now, because that map is just a camera really high in the level. What it's doing now is calculating the position from where you are to where you need to be when you land. And during that time, it's not going to. It has to be doing something. And this is the HIS suit, so that's how that works. So the whole. The point I'm making is the whole world is already pre-built. That's what makes it seamless. You're not going back to a lobby. You're not going back to, um, you know, the main menu. You're not going anywhere in order to go from A to B. Okay, but if it's already loaded, why is there a loading screen? Simply because, again, there's a lot of processing that has to go on, and we have to show you something while it's going on because there's nothing to show. Why not have like you an ex why not have an extended animation that's like a teleporting animation? instead of a loading screen, because then it, that would be seamless. It'd be unnoticeable that there was actually a loading screen going on to a person who doesn't really understand games. Well, the, un well, the animation you're talking about is actually the circular icon on the little right-hand corner. All you're suggesting is, well, let's not use, a, let's not use an animated icon. Let's use something that fills up the screen that shows something else other than the static screen. How does it make it any different? What is the purpose? What does it give the game that makes it um, worth doing? It's a difference between, it's like saying, well, I'm going to put, uh, you know, two $500 rims on my car. It looks nice, but why do you need $500 rims on your car? 
Okay, I don't Listen, get. I don't understand what you're getting at there. No, I'm talking about you, you. Your suggestion that we should use an animation, and I'm saying there is an animation. That, is that, it... That's that's so. Then it would appear seamless, but because with these loading screens that are just a static image and a small rotating icon, that's that's not seamless in any kind of books. No, no, no. That's not that's not seamless to you and the people who don't understand it. Seamless I I do understand it. it. I, I'm doing. I don't believe. I don't believe. I don't believe you do. I, I'm doing a game design course at university. I, I make. I'm making a game right now for mobiles. Uh -huh. I think I understand okay. how games work. And at 19, all of a sudden, you know everything about. Oh, 19. How do you know that? Technology. Well, aren't you 19? How do you know that? You haven't answered my question. Are you or are you not 19? I am 19, and I'm asking, how do okay, you know that? There you go. I don't know, somebody mentioned it. Who? I, I, I want to know who. Go. I want to know who found out that I was 19. Hang on, let me see. Uh, I, I think it's probably on my Steam, on the Steam page. I'll show you right now. Hang on. I think that's where I saw it. I Steam, don't have Steam I don't page. have my age on Steam. Hang on. I'm not talking about your age on Steam. Somebody said there's a 19 year old streaming this right now. Hang on. I'm looking in this forum, by the way, in this thread. Hang on, let me just post it for you. This okay. is the thread I'm looking at. Okay. Hang on, Let's see if I can find it. That's the thread you're looking at. So there should be somebody mentioning 19 here. I think it's probably on page two. Hang on a second. Nope, that's not it. Hang on. Is that the? Is that this? Is that the? Oh no, that's sorry, that's the wrong one. Let me. That's okay. the wrong. Uh, that's a, that's the wrong thread. It's in the free play uh, stress test. I thought can, I saw it. It's probably in this one. Hang on a minute. Can you link that on my stream, please, so I can find out for myself? Yeah, I'm looking. Hang on. It's probably on page two. Let me just see. Hang on a minute. Because I know somebody mentioned me on that. Because I looked at it earlier. Yeah, somebody. Hang on a minute. Let's see, is that it? Nope, nope, nope. You can just say if you dox me, mate. That's all you get. Just all you gotta do is say it. You really think that I have time for that, or if I did, I, I wouldn't say it. Come I, on, I, I, I know this. either you. Or, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying I know either you or your goons have done in the past to other people. So no, we have not. I, oh, hang on a second. You're in, hang on a second, I'm still looking. Give me one second. I know somebody mentioned it. I didn't pick it out of a hat. Okay. No one expected to pick it out of a hat. It's a specific age. Hang on, let's see. Okay, here's the first mention of. Da, 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 da. Hang on. Let me see if it's in my chat. One sec. No, 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 that's not it. Because I know I saw it. I'm just trying to figure out where I saw it. Give me one second. No, nope, that's not it. Apparently, I have it in my about me, so I'll let you off there. <laughs> Say again? Apparently, it's in my about me on Twitch, so I'll let you off. Where, it, where is it? It's on where? On Twitch. Oh! Well, that's not where I saw it. I can tell you right oh. now. Somebody, somebody sent me a message that said you there's should've... some nineteen, there's you some should... nineteen year old right now playing on Twitch. I don't, you see, so I wasn't making it up. It wasn't in my, okay. it wasn't something I made up. Okay. Well, thanks for being, thanks for being honest about that. By that's the way, that's fine. I'm not that much of a cunt. Yeah, because I had no idea. I had no idea you were nineteen. On some, on somebody mentioned it, and I'm looking at the message right now in my Steam chat. It says. I don't know if you know about this, but there's some 19-year-old right now on Twitch playing the games, claiming that it's on free play. And I said, oh, okay. Actually, I was driving at the time. And you know, the, you've probably seen him on the um, on the forum, on the Steam forum, one of the guy, one of my guys. Shohashi. Uh, no, that's it wasn't him. It wasn't Show that sent me that. But anyway, so if it's on your Twitch stream, then that's where he got it from. Nobody, nobody doxed you, mate. Okay, that's fine. I just know that it's happened in the past to other people, and yeah, well, that's... it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't by me. Okay, that's fine. I, I didn't say it was by you. I just, I said it might have been by you or your goons. I don't know the full story, so my bad. Well, like I said, my hands well, up for that. Well, like I said, not, not to, not to worry. Uh, uh, you know, it, ha it happens. I mean, this is a digital world. All kinds of things go on. But again, like I said, I didn't pick out of a hat. Otherwise, I would have said, hey, look, it's right there on Twitch. 
Okay. Um, Listen, yeah. I, I, have to, I have to go. I have to go. This okay. has been fun. So, but um, tell you what I want you to do. I mean, I I am you on Skype. I'm going to um, I'm going to text send you a few messages. Send me your name. I'll unblock your 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 millions of Steam accounts. Okay. But I but I am interested in hearing your thoughts on how we can make the keyboard controls for the aircraft better because like I said I simply haven't done it because I don't want to mess with it but um, you brought up some valid points and I'm willing to again it's all about constructive criticism I don't do well with attacks I don't do well with hostility because I react in a very 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 bad way but the reason I'm around all these years is because I do listen I do listen to constructive criticism I just do not deal with harassment okay. Or, bull or bullying, I just don't. Anyway, I'm glad we had this talk, and I will Skype you, and we can set up something. You and I can go through the game. Yeah, that's fine. Or the current, the current version, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, so can I expect you tomorrow, or maybe sometime in the yeah. weekend? Okay. We'll, yeah, we'll set something up on Skype. Okay, that's fine. But now you're famous. Try not to step in front of a bus. Uh, can't make any promises. <laughs> Have a good night. You too. See ya. Take care. Right, that was uh, that was interesting. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. God, I am a fucking idiot. <laughs> no, I... they're ignorant. That's <laughs> ignorant. Thank you, uh, Angry Peas. I. I, I, that hasn't been updated in like six months. I forgot I had it there. That's fine. I'm sure people will very much love some keys for this. God damn. Oh, you bastard. Stop shooting me. I keep dragging. I, I'm so glad I could do that for people. I would have I would have liked to talk a bit more, but I didn't want to be too rude. I was paranoid. I was like, "Oh shit! How did he find out that?" It's right there. I can see it on the screen. I hate myself so much. No problem. I hope people enjoy it. Yeah, I I agree. He didn't really stay on topic. Hopefully, I can get him on topic more when it's more of a you know, it's more of an official Q&A rather than impromptu. Okay. God. That was int I honestly was not expecting my night to go like that, guys. Why is the muscle flash green? Am I dead? Oh, my guns. Oh. Where, where are you going, buddy? Oh, maybe I made him crash. It's a crash gun. <laughs> Look, Fisher, man. <coughs> God. Some phlegm right there. It did feel like he dodged some of my questions, so I'm going to make sure he stays on topic next time. 